Hi, welcome to the 2020 National Congress. My name is Jane Caruso. I am the XL Chair from Region 7, and with me today is Diane Palmer, virtually of course, the Region 2 XL Chair. And we're going to talk today about solving some of the Excel mysteries. So what we've done is collect some questions that have been asked more than once from more than one region across the country. And we've pulled them together and we're going to share them with you, the questions, and we're going to give you the answers. Okay, so let us start with vaulting. And as we go through, if you have any mysteries of your own, please share them with us because we would really like the opportunity to try to solve them for you. Okay, let's start with bronze vault option one. This is the 9.0 vault. It's the stretch jump off the board onto the mat and then a kick to handstand flat back. So let's watch this young lady do the bronze vault option one. Across. Across. Stand out. Okay, so what do we do with that? We're going to void the first part. She's supposed to run on, hurdle onto the board and do a stretch jump, and that never happened. She just ran right through the board onto the mat. So um, we're going to void the first part. So the second part can be scored. So her highest possible score is a 4.5. However, the lowest score that we can give her is the Excel courtesy score, which is a 4.0. So even though there were more than five tenths in deductions in the second half, we're going to award this athlete the 4.0 courtesy score. Okay, let's look at bronze vault option two. This is the jump to handstand onto the mat stack and then the flat back. This is the 10.0 vault. Go, go. Okay, so here's another, uh-oh. She didn't do the vault she told us she was going to do. She called the jump to handstand, we didn't see that. But there is no deduction for doing the wrong vault. So in this case, the judge could consider this as the bronze vault option one and start it from a 9.0 start value. We would again void the first part of her vault and judge the second half with the maximum score being a 4.5. Okay, let's look at one more bronze vault. This again is option two, the jump to handstand and the flat back. Oh, oh. And yes, this has happened more than one time. So let's just remember that we don't judge the run in Excel. We're not gonna take a fall. We're not gonna take a lack of acceleration or any of those deductions that don't exist in Excel. Um, we are just going to judge the ball and ignore whatever happened on the runway. So we have no deduction for the coach kneeling on the mat stack or leaning against it as they're trying to spot. So let's just take a look at two of those instances. Go. So there you can see the coach is pretty much pressed back up against that wall. Um, it might not be the ideal place for her to be on top of that mat. I don't know if it changes the surface tension of the mat for the athlete, but it's not ideal, but it is allowed. If that's where she needs to be, then she can be there. Look at a second example. Okay, so this athlete is vaulting over the five by five and you saw the coach lean in as she tried to reach her to get her over to clear the mat stack. Again, no deduction for those things. 
I will encourage, if possible, if the meet logistics and the space allows it, if the coach needed to kneel on the 5 by 10 instead of centering the runway in the center of the 10 feet of mat, we could try to move the mat so the runway is centered on one five foot end of the mat. And that would make it easier for the coach to reach the athlete without actually having to kneel on the mat. So just a thought, if that's possible, we should try that. Okay, here's our quiz. This is Bronze Vault. She is going to do a uh, jump to handstand flat back. Okay, so what do we do with that? Well, we have some choices here. A, there's no deduction because the vault ended when she landed in a flat back and she may salute from standing on the floor. B, we take a fall, five tenths deduction. She must get up on the mat, show her flat back position, and then sit up and salute. C, we take a fall, but it's okay if she salutes from the floor. D, we're going to take a one tenth attire deduction for wearing a slippery leotard. <clears throat> so get your answer ready because here it is. We're not going to take any deduction because the vault ended when she landed in the flat back. Okay, so let's watch this silver vault. This is the handspring over the mat stack. So, if the athlete were to land on the table with her body in support on top of the mat stack, we would void that. If she hits the mat or brushes it, on the way over in the after flight, it's a two tenth deduction. So that's a big difference. So what do you think you saw here? A hit or a fall onto the table. So we don't have the luxury of judging in slow motion or being able to request a still shot or anything. So we have to make the decisions as we see what happens. So this actually is a still shot. And looking at this, I would think that she landed on top of the mat stack in support. And this would probably be, for me, a void vault. Okay, let's look at another example of a silver. Handspring over the mat stack. Okay, what about that one? What did you think there? What did she do? Did she hit the mat on the way over in the after flight or did she land on top of the mat stack in support? Okay, so this is a this is a close call. When I saw it in fast motion, I took a hit and I, I awarded it. So if this picture helps you make your decision, that's great. But again, we don't have this luxury of seeing these things live when we're judging. Okay, one more. This is a silver vault. You know they have two options, the uh, quarter to half on and end up facing the table or the front handspring. So this is the front handspring over the mat stack. Okay, so we already know that she's allowed to be spotted, but what do we do with the rest of that? Okay, so there are no additional turns permitted in the handspring. So you can see that she actually came on to the mat stack in the handspring position. She didn't turn on. She didn't do a quarter or a half on. She came on in the front handspring position. <clears throat> so that additional turn that she did would void the ball. <clears throat> okay, let's talk a little bit about some bars. So we get this question a lot, underswing, tap swing, counter swing, forward swing, backward swing. What is the skill? When does it start? When does it end? So let's clear that up. There are no angle requirements, first of all, <clears throat> in order to get value part credit. We are looking for swingfulness. We're looking for good body position. And for value part credit, you're going to see two pieces. For example, if they do an underswing, you're going to see a counterswing. And that would be 1A skill. 
if they're coming from a squat position on the low bar and they tap swing forward and then back counter swing, that would be 1A skill. So a tap swing or an underswing, these skills are not value parts on their own. There needs to be that counter. Okay, so let's just look at a couple examples. How many do you see here? We're talking about the underswing, tap swing, counter swing. How many value parts do you see in that? Okay, so here we see the tap swing forward right into the dismount. So that is all one skill. The tap swing forward did not have a counterpart. It went right into the dismount. So that is one A skill. Okay, let's take a look at this example. Okay, so in this instance, you did see the forward swing or the tap swing to the backward counter swing. So that would be your first A skill. And then the tap swing forward to the dismount would be a second A skill. Okay, one more example. Okay, so you saw an underswing to a counterswing, that's 1A. You saw the tap swing to the counterswing, that's the second A. And then you saw the tap swing into the dismount, that would be your third A. Okay, so let's count the skills. This is a silver bar routine and she needs five value parts. Let's take a look at what we have. <laughs> Okay, so does she have the five value parts? Let's watch again. Well, we won't watch again, okay? The point being here is that the cast squat on is one skill and the stretch jump forward off dismount is the second skill. So she's going to get two skills. It's not cast squat on jump off one skill, it's cast squat on. First skill, stretch jump forward off dismount, second skill. Okay, let's watch this gold athlete do her bar routine. We're looking at her clear hip circle here. We're looking for amplitude. Okay, so you can see she came out under horizontal but we have to remember, I know it's hard, but we have to remember we don't deduct the gold gymnast for angle amplitude on the clear hip circle. You wait until platinum and diamond to do that. We do that deliberately because we want to encourage that skill in, in the gold athlete. We want them to get used to doing it and competing it and making it better. So we're not gonna deduct for amplitude on the gold clear hip. Okay, <clears throat> so let's watch this gold routine and let's look at a start value for her. Okay, she needs six A's. She needs a horizontal skill. She needs a 360 circle and she needs a dismount from the high bar. So I will count them with you. Pull over, first skill. Cast of no value, back hip circle is the second skill. Squat on, third, forward swing, tap swing, fourth, forward swing, dismount is the fifth. So she has five skills, she needs six. So she's in trouble because that cast did not go to horizontal. So she has a 9-0 start value. We lovingly call this double jeopardy in Excel. Um, it's a toughie. Uh, because the cast didn't go to horizontal, she is missing the horizontal skill. She's also missing the sixth 
A. So she's missing two special requirements, so we start her at a 9-0. It is not uncommon, unfortunately, for us to see the 9-4 start value go up. OK, so she's actually missing two special requirements. Now, it's an easy fix for her if she did a maybe a glide to a stand and then the pullover. That would at least give her the sixth element. She'd still have just a 9-5 start value, but at least it wouldn't be a 9-0. OK, so let's look at this platinum bar routine um, and keep in mind that the platinum athlete needs to be above horizontal, not much above horizontal, but she's got to be above horizontal to get a value part. So let's take a look at this. So long hand hip, she has a nice cast here, back hip circle, uh-oh, extra swing, and then she has another cast. Okay, so the question is, do I take the extra swing and can I still give her that A value part if she needed it? And the answer is yes. You're going to take an extra swing, but if that extra swing results in a cast above horizontal, you may give her the value part, even though you took three tenths for the extra swing. <clears throat> okay, so let's take a look at this platinum bar routine. She needs to do a skill above horizontal. She needs a 360 circle. She needs a kip and she needs to dismount off the high bar. So those are her four requirements. So let's just take a look at those. Okay, so this is actually a common routine and it's a common mistake that's made by the judges. So we want to make sure, it's also a mistake from the coaches then because they put this routine together. Um, so you always wanna have your additional skill chart handy. That dismount is not a value part for platinum. And yet we see platinums doing it all the time. And sometimes they get pretty long in the season before it gets caught. So um, coaches need to realize that there's a lot of additional skills for the bronze and the silver. There's a few less for gold. There's not many for platinum and diamond. So that skill disappears off the additional skill chart at platinum. So we want to make sure that if you see that, that you put that start value up right away so the coach understands there's a problem. Okay, here's a little clip from a diamond routine, and uh, I want you to tell me how many special requirements you have seen that were fulfilled so far in the routine. Uh, note that she needs a, um, a 45 degree above horizontal skill. She needs a 360 B circle. She needs another B that's either a release or a pirouette or a second circle. Um, and she needs to dismount off the high bar with a salto or a hect. So let's see how many special requirements you see here. Okay, so what did you see? Okay, you saw a cast handstand half turn. And yes, that does fulfill two special requirements. It fulfills special requirement number one, the skill that goes above 45 degrees, and it fulfills special requirement number three, which would be the pirouette. So unless specifically noted, one skill may count for two special requirements. Okay, let's move on to balance beam. Um, let's watch this young lady. She's practicing, but it could easily be in a competition. Let's watch her do her routine. Oh. Eight, nine, Uh-oh, 
So remember, <clears throat> we don't have deductions for the physical or the visual cues. In order to take a deduction, you must hear a verbal cue. You must hear spoken words. If the coach had said, stretch jump, then you would take a deduction. But the fact that she demonstrated it is not worthy of a deduction. Okay, <clears throat> so this was just clarified um, by our technical committee. And um, we see this all the time. We all know what to do with it. But the question we get all the time is, why do we do it that way? So let's figure this four, out. Nine. Three, nine, eight, nine, four, nine. Okay, so we have a back walkover and a fall, and then we have a back walkover, back walkover. <clears throat> so the question that we get is that second back walkover is connected to nothing on either side, just as the first back walkover is. Nothing, there's the same entrance and exit. So the question we get is why are we giving that second back walkover in A, which is what we do, and we all know that we should do that. So clearing up the mystery here is that being connected to a non-value part is different from being connected to nothing. Okay, so that is why we give the A for the second, the, the A for the first, the A for the second, and we have no value part for the third. <laughs> okay, so let's just take a look at this uh, beam mount. Does that get value part credit, yes or no? Okay, so all mounts are A's, and yes, this mount is actually in the code coming from the feet, but all mounts are A's. Unless the athlete is actually climbing up the standards, all mounts are A's. So if you saw this <clears throat> coming from the bottom instead of the feet, then yes, you would still give this an A value part. Okay, we get lots of questions about the lever on beam, and that would depend upon what part of the country you're from, because I might be saying, we get all kinds of questions about the lever, okay? So lever, lever, whatever you wanna call it, we get lots of questions. So what exactly are we supposed to see? Well, ideally, we wanna see a straight line from the fingers to the toes, that's preferred. Otherwise, we're probably going to take a, a body position deduction. There is no angle or height requirement of the back leg. Hands must touch the beam while the back leg is off the beam. The support leg may be bent, it may be straight, and yes, it counts as an acro skill for bronze. So let's take a look at this example. Okay, that's fairly nice lever. That lever would get value part credit also with body position. This one has got some execution, and this one does not get credit at all. Okay, so I hope that helps you evaluate the lever or the lever. Okay, so we got a question here um, about this bronze athlete. Bronze are not allowed to do walkovers. So what do we do? Okay, so is that a walkover? Hmm, it's not really, because the walkover starts from a stand. That's the hard part of doing that skill. You're standing up and you reach backward to the beam. <clears throat> so the kickover from the bridge is not considered a walkover skill. And if you see a bronze do this, it is permitted. Okay, so let's look at these handstands. This is a bronze and they could do partial handstands. So let's take a look. Okay, so for bronze, clearly 
Um, the second one is better. It was nicer to look at. But what we're looking for is that one leg to reach 45 degrees above horizontal. So that's where your eye should go. It is not required for the bronze to have their feet come together. So let's look at silver. They are allowed to do partial handstands too. They must reach 45 degrees and the feet must be together at the same time. So when they reach 45 degrees, that's the point at which the feet have to be together. So let's take a look at this example. Okay, she pretty much just gets there to 45 degrees. This one never brings her feet together. She would not get value part. And this one is, is more at horizontal. It's nowhere near 45 degrees, so that would not get value part either. So we just need to remember that the bronze don't have to bring the feet together, silver do, and they have to come together when they're at 45 degrees. Okay, let's watch this gold athlete. There are a lot of questions on balance beam about, we'll call it verticality. So what we're looking for is that nice stretched line from the shoulders through the hips. The feet and the legs can be in any position, any optional position that they want to be. So she didn't need to get that foot any further over than she did. So if you saw that, yes, she's vertical and she can have a vertical skill. Okay, what about this? Would you give this a vertical skill? Okay, and you would give that. You, you see that straight line from the shoulders through the hips, so she is fine. Now this one, tell me what you think about her. Does she get a vertical skill? So that's tough, you know, if you don't know that's coming because you don't know to watch for it. But again, we don't see slow motion. We don't see still shots, but this is where she is. So you can see she does have that straight stretch line from the shoulders through the hips. So that would be okay for a vertical skill. Okay, now what about these? Let's watch this young lady on the left with her nice candlestick position. And this one on the right, reaching it. Reach your butt more. There you go. Okay, so the candlestick, as lovely as they are, that position would not be a vertical skill. She's really got support on her upper shoulders and her back, and we don't have that straight line because the support really is on the back of her neck and her, her back, and we don't have that line through the um, shoulders and the hips. So a candlestick is not going to cut it for being vertical. Okay, let's count uh, acro parts here for this young lady. She's a gold and we need, um, she needs two acro skills. Let's count her value parts. Okay, nice handstand, no question, correct? And another handstand. Okay, so those Handstands are in the same skill. They are in the same cell. I'm sorry. They're considered the same skill. So if she wanted credit for both of those skills, if she needed credit uh, for her special requirements, then she would have had to make that first handstand different. She would have had to have given it a different entrance or exit. She would have had to stretch jump connected to it or something. But as done this way, she would only have one A value part. Okay, we do get this question. It came up, I think, three times, so let's check it out. How many A acro value parts do you see here? Okay, we are only seeing one. Okay, we do not award an A value part for the handstand and an A value part for the forward roll. So this is all just one A value part. I'm sorry. B value part, forgive me. Um,
Okay. Let's move on to some more handstands. Just a reminder that the handstand may be the first or second element in a series. Um, the handstand does not need to be held. Again, any leg position is fine. So let's just take a look at these two. Handstand. Back walkover. Cartwheel, swing through to a handstand. That is fine as well. Okay. Okay, acro series. To give or not to give. This is the same actually as J-O, but it's a reminder. We want to look at the amplitude of the kick in between two skills. And this is really important in Excel because we see a lot of these kinds of combinations in platinum and in diamond. We see kids doing these skills that are connected with that swing through. So let's just take a look. Cartwheel, swing through to a handstand. Okay, so what did you think? What did you think of that connection? Would you have given that or not? So I have this handy dandy protractor on my phone. It's really great. I can hold it up and take a picture. So she is actually above 45 degrees. You can see she's, um, she's not gonna make the mark there. She's actually at 72. So she's closer to 90 than she is to 45. So this would be a broken. When I saw this, it never occurred to me to break it, but when I measured it, it is too high. Okay, let's look at another example. Handstand, swing through to a cartwheel. Okay, so that one looked lower, correct? And it is, she's at 41 degrees. So um, she would be fine with that connection. Okay, there are some things, just as J.O., that are inherently not connectable, and we don't see them that much in J.O. because they're not important. They don't really help them that much in the J.O. routines, but they do in Excel, but unfortunately, we can't connect these. Okay, as great of a connection as that is, it would not count. Okay, same thing there, that's a no-go. She would have had to have swung that leg forward and kicked up to the second handstand on the other leg in order for that to be a connection. Okay, so floor. We, um, sometimes we see so much creativity in the Excel program. I see it so much more really than I do in J.O. These kids emote, they express, they have all these cool skills. But sometimes when I'm in a gym, I'll tell the coach, please keep the creativity out of the special requirements. Because it, 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 if you're asking the judge to make a judgment, the call might not go in your favor. So let's take a look at this lady's dance passage. Okay, so she needs the leap with 150. Okay, so if you never saw that before, you might think, what was that? What do I do with that? I don't know. So um, if I'm judging that, I'm thinking, well, she did come off on one leg and there might've been a kick to 150 in there. So I guess I should give it, but I just don't recognize the skill. So we see these mysterious things a lot more on Excel routines than we do in, in JO routines. So you just really have to make that decision at the time that you see it. Okay, let's look at a couple of things here. Let's look at the athlete on the top. Round off backward roll, landing on her knees. Now, initially we were seeing judges take five tenths for a fall. We don't wanna do that. The way she landed is an optional landing position and she is okay to do it that way. Okay, let's look at um, the next one.
Okay, so we have that exception with that rebound so that bronze and silver can do a round off rebound backward roll because normally that rebound would break a series. Um, we do that to get the kids used to traveling backwards and working out of that round off. Can she do it this way, a round off into a forward roll? No, she really can't. Okay, that is not the exception. The exception is to the backward roll, and we do that for a reason. So if you see a round off into a forward roll, that's not a series. Okay, let's see what's happening here. Go. Forward roll through the knee to the cartwheel. Again, she finished that forward roll in an optional leg position. That's okay. She didn't stop. It was continuous. That is okay. Let's look at another example. Okay, so now what do we do? If you've never seen that before and you don't know or you haven't, it hasn't been evaluated, this is another place where this is a cool back handspring. I love it. But does she get an acro series for that? I didn't know. So in our region, we are giving this. So when you see something like this, you need to encourage that athlete to submit it for a, an evaluation so that she has that piece of paper with her all the time that says, yes, this is okay. She landed that way and it's fine. And yes, she can get her acro series. So if you see something creative like that, encourage them to write it up. Okay, let's look at this young lady. Round off, backward roll, puts the hands down. Okay, is that adduction or is that allowed? It is allowed, and I'll tell you why, because with the creativity that we see in these Excel athletes, some of them will do round off, straddle backward roll. Some will do round off, rebound, pike backward roll. And we really do want them to put their hands down for those two skills. So rather than make one rule for the tuck roll and another rule for the other rolls, we just decided that it's okay if she puts her hands down. Okay, next example. Forward roll. Forward roll through to a sit. Is it a series if she doesn't finish up on her feet? Yes, it is. She is okay to doing that. It's her optional ending position and it is fine. Okay, so let's look at this gold. She wants an acro series here. As lovely as that dive roll was, it is not considered a flight skill because it has support ultimately on the back. So, if she's looking for a flight series, no credit. If she just wants to do something pretty, that's fine, but we don't give this a series. Okay, so let's look at this um, floor dance connection. This is her dance passage. This is a gold. Okay, so we have a split leap to a switch side leap to a split jump. Okay, that switch side leap is the C, and it's in between the two B allowable skills, so it breaks that passage. So five tenths, no series, five tenths for a restricted skill. So let's change it up a little bit. Okay, she really wants us to see that she can do that switch side leap. So now she's changed it. So we have the switch leg leap to the split leap to the switch side leap. So her series is okay. Her passage is okay. She can do the switch leap to the split leap. We are still going to take five tenths for the restricted skill. Okay, again, we see a lot of creativity here. And just be aware that, that you might see some skills that aren't necessarily in the code. Okay, so she has a tuck jump, half turn to her feet. It's fine. You know, we're, we're not going to penalize her for doing that. It's creative. It's different. And we can look at that jump. And we could look at the root skill. We can give her an A value part. So 
Our athletes like to do things different. They don't like to do them the way they are in the book, but we just need to keep in mind that if we can give credit to them, that we do. Okay, and another pretty turn here, but is it a B or not? So these things are kind of hard to see when, when you're judging because it all kind of maybe sometimes gets muddled when they're coming down. So you want to be uh, judicious in looking at her heel lift and drop. So she lifts here, she drops here. So it's a little bit incomplete, but before she falls down to the ground, she's done what she needs to do. So we'd give her a, a, a tenth maybe for incomplete rotation, but we would award her that B value part. Okay. And that's what we have for you today. And we still would love to hear if you have any mysteries and they haven't been addressed today, please reach out to your regional chair or to me. We'd be happy to solve them for you. Thanks for coming.